Hi, dear friends, some words of Torah for Parshat Va'et Hanan and Shabbos Nachamu. Our hearts are all focused on the land of Israel. On the one hand, we are bracing ourselves for attack, God forbid. At the same time, the people of Israel are strong, and we have confidence that Hashem will fight with us. We look out at the land, both figuratively and literally, from our computer screens. It is a beautiful land, to be sure. And as we see so much uncertainty on our own shores, we are drawn to Israel like never before. Looking out upon Eretz Israel is one of the opening scenes of our Parsha. After unsuccessfully petitioning God to enter the land, Moshe is told by Hashem that he won't be able to physically enter. Instead, he should look out upon the land from a high vista. Hashem says, Ale Rosh HaPisga, ascend to the top of the outlook. Visa Einecha, lift up your eyes. Yama Vitsafona Vitemanu Umizracha, out towards the west, north, south, and east. And see with your eyes. You will not cross over this Jordan River. It's curious, this language. Why did Hashem have to tell Moshe that he should see with his eyes? What else was he supposed to see with? There is one other biblical character who was told by God to look out upon the land, using almost the exact same language that was used for Moshe. In Parshat Lech Lecha, Avraham and his nephew Lot parted ways. Immediately after that, Hashem appeared to Avraham and promised him that the entire land of Israel, all that he could see, would one day be his. The verse reads, God says to Avraham, Sana enecha ure, lift up your eyes and see, min makom asher atasham, from the place where you currently are, tzafona vanegba vakedma vayama north, south, east, and west. This is the land that I shall give you. Now, in the case of Avraham, Hashem did not tell Avraham to see with his own eyes or Eve Einecha. Furthermore, instead of telling Avraham to ascend to a higher altitude lookout point, Hashem deliberately told Avraham to look out from the place you currently are. Hamakom asher atasham. It seems that there is a deliberate contrast being made in scripture between Avraham and Moshe. So what's going on? What Moshe was denied entry into Eretz Yisrael. While the Torah frames it as a punishment to Moshe, it would seem as if this is only the surface interpretation to justify how such a holy and valorous man who gave his whole life to his people would be denied the ultimate objective of all those efforts. In reality, as our sages in a number of commentaries reflect, Moshe simply could not enter because his style of leadership wasn't right for the nation that would conquer and populate the land. Moshe was accustomed to the kind of leadership where God was manifest daily in everyone's life, where the Jews were collected in one geographical location, and where there was a very clear directional leadership from heaven downward to earth. Life in Eretz Yisrael required a different kind of leader who understood that the people would have a new level of autonomy and that decision-making for the nation would involve more of a partnership between heaven and earth. A person sees with his eyes, but we would call that a passive act since what I see isn't affected by my looking at it. Moshe's attitude toward the destiny of the Jewish people was that we were to passively receive the Torah and passively go along with the events that unfolded over the course of our history. This is not the way Hashem wishes for the Jewish people to comport themselves moving forward. We must learn to fight back when we are attacked, to innovate new law and new ways of studying Torah, to innovate new technologies and new ways of being a holy people. Hashem was communicating to Moshe that because you have always been the passive leader, the leader who faithfully receives the law and pristinely transmits it, you have dutifully served the purpose for which you were appointed during the incipient stages of Matan Torah and the desert experience. Ascend a high place, because that is where you are mentally connected more to the guidance of heaven than to the proactivity of the land. See with your passive eyes the eyes which passively receive the Torah, and realize that you cannot enter, you cannot go any further. Note that the name of the river that divides between the desert and Eretz Yisrael is the Yardain, the Jordan River. The word Yardain derives from the root Yered, which means to descend. 
You, Moshe, are incapable of descending down to the land. Your state of ascent is antithetical to the new realities of Eretz Israel, and therefore you cannot pass over the crossing point of Yardain, which means to descend. Contrast Moshe with Avraham. Avraham knew how to relate to all people and was the ultimate innovator and iconoclast. He represents the chalutz, the pioneer who bucks the trends of society and is able to create his own reality, unlike his nephew Lot, who chooses the big city of Sodom so that he can be part of the action of what is currently in vogue. Avraham is at peace being the Ivri, the Hebrew, which literally means being the outsider. Avraham is used to struggling with God, fighting to save the people of Sodom. Hashem thus instructs Avraham that you represent the type of Jew who will be able to conquer and populate Eretz Israel. You, Avraham, do not need to ascend to heaven. You are right where you need to be, your feet planted on this land from the place where you currently are. You should gaze at the land because your gaze, as related by the sages, will not only inform you about the land, but will also influence the land's future ability to be a holy place. Your gaze is not just with your eyes, but is rather a proactive one that will have influence upon the land's destiny. It is not a passive look of the eyes, but rather a spiritual outpouring that will impact your descendants' future. There are two ways for us to look at the historical events that are taking place right now, all revolving around our people and our land. We can take a passive look and continue reading our social media feeds, or we can take a proactive gaze and be a source of influence and change. There are so many positive efforts that we can take to help the people of Israel and also to defend the integrity of the Jewish community right here where we find ourselves in the diaspora. This is a responsibility that we must all shoulder. At the very minimum, consider things that we can do to demonstrate that our lives are not the same. Be mindful of how the world has changed and try to heighten your Jewish experience as a result. Live your life with new sensitivity and awareness. For example, when you bless your children or grandchildren on Friday night, take a little bit more time and look in their eyes with great compassion when doing so and give them a loving embrace. Extend Shabbat and sing Havdalah a little bit more slowly. Spend more time with your spouse and take longer walks. Share your experiences and the highlights of your week with your family. Tell people what you admire about them. Reach out to an old friend or to a senior who could use some company. Try to heighten your religious observance by taking on a new mitzvah or a new prayer. And so, dear friends, may we all merit to see with more than just our eyes. May our vision and our efforts to improve the people and land of Israel, as well as the entire world, bring redemption very soon. May we see it bimhera biamenu amen. Here's wishing you a beautiful Shabbos and a good world towards the future. Shabbat Shalom.